Elliot's glad to be here. <laughs> oh, Lily. Oh, is that Lily? <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Well, grab your Bibles with me to turn and turn with me to Matthew chapter eight. Matthew chapter eight. We'll start in verse five. And then if you'll also find Mark chapter 6, we're going to have two different places to read from in our text tonight. Yeah. And we'll start in Matthew chapter 8, and then we'll go over to Mark chapter 6. In Matthew chapter 8, starting in verse 5, if you'll stand with me, Amen. in reverence to God's Word. The message I want to preach tonight is under authority. Amen. Matthew chapter 8, starting in verse 5, it says, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, Grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, <coughs> having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth. And to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Amen. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. Yeah. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. Now if you would look to, with me to Mark chapter 6, <clears throat> starting in verse 1. Says in verse 1 of Mark chapter 6, And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Yeah. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and, of, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. Lord, we pray tonight that you would open up the eyes of our understanding. Lord, that we might see what you have for us tonight. Lord, that you would use me as your mouthpiece. Lord, to open my mouth and to speak through me the things which you would have for our ears to hear. And Lord, I pray that we would have ears to hear. Amen. Lord, that our hearts would soak in and retain the things that you have for us tonight, that we might be changed. And Lord, that we might be drawn closer to you. Amen. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' precious and holy name, we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Under authority. We find that this man in Matthew chapter 8 
verses 5 to 13, the centurion man came to Jesus asking for his servant to be healed. And Jesus was going to come to his house, but he said, just speak the word only. Amen. But I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. And you'll find in another scripture, I think in Mark, where he said, and I, I didn't even feel worthy to come to you and ask this. But I know that you have the authority. Amen. Amen. Because I also am a man under authority and have men under me. And I go, or I ask them to go, and they go. I ask them to come, and they come. I ask my servant to do this, and he does it. Amen? And Jesus said, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. But this centurion man, a centurion was a Roman uh, military man. He was the captain of a hundred men. An officer in the Roman army. He had fought battles. And if anybody ever studies about the Roman soldiers and how they trained and what they went through, they were a mighty army. And the things that he had seen, the things that he had done, he didn't just get to be a centurion by birth. Amen. He had to go through some things. He had uh, himself to be one of those men who followed a leader and was obedient under that leader and to do well, amen? To be able to get to the part, the, to be a captain of a hundred men. So he was not uh, just someone who was put in this position because of, of his uh, background. No, he was put in that position because, as the Bible says, he that is going to be a master must be a servant. He that's going to be a leader must know how to serve. Amen? But yet, when he was talking to Jesus, he said, I am not worthy. I am not worthy. You know, the uh, <clears throat> thing that we need to understand is that for God to truly work in our lives, for our faith to be strong, we have to be humble. Yeah. In fact, humility and faith go hand in hand. Because those who are proudful and those who are not humble are usually ones that don't have very strong faith. But it's the one who are meek and it's the ones who are humble. Those are the ones that have a faith that is strong and that makes God uh, pleased in His sight. Yeah. Just as Jesus said, just he marveled. He marveled at this man's faith because of his humility. We find over in Mark chapter 6, we find a different story. <coughs> we find a story of Jesus coming to his own people, of his own countrymen in Nazareth. And he began to teach them in the, in the temple on Sabbath. And what did they say? Who is this? Isn't this just a carpenter? Isn't just this the son of Joseph and Mary? We know all of his brothers. Oh, we've known him since he was a little kid. And who is he to come and tell us this? And the Bible says that they were offended. Yeah. Isn't it sad that in the place where Jesus uh, should be known of his... That that is where many offenses come. It's in the church house, amen? amen. Yeah. That when the gospel is preached or when the message is preached, that people get offended. They don't want to hear it. They say, who is he to talk to me? Yeah. Or Jesus is just something that is not really, uh, you know, that people believe in. But uh, no, Jesus is not the head of the church. The deacons are the head of the church. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Or sister so-and-so, because she gave all this money and this is, you know. And it has nothing to do with Jesus being the head of, of the body. Amen? Yeah. And yet people get offended. And it is the people of God that say that, that their heart should be close to the Lord and yet they're the ones that get offended. But this Gentile centurion man, a man that had no place there, yet comes and Jesus is marveled by his faith because of his humility. 
That's the thing that the church has lost is their humility because they have forgotten that they are under authority. Amen. Amen? Mm -hmm. That this church is not our church. It's the church of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. It belongs to Him. And it is run by Him through this right here. Amen? Amen. And that if there is things in this that uh, our lives don't line up to, that it's not His fault, it's our fault. Amen? Amen. And that we're the ones that need to humble ourselves and repent. And get right with Him. Because when it comes down to it, we are not worthy to be here. Yeah. If it was what we truly deserve, we would all uh, be uh, given to death. Yes. And I'm talking about the second death. Because there is none here worthy of the salvation and the blessings that come from our salvation. Yeah. We did nothing to deserve it. In fact, the contrary. We did everything not to deserve it. But yet God loved us anyway. Yeah. Amen. But God, who commendeth His Lord love toward us. Amen? Isn't yeah. that what the Bible says? Yeah. That we are not worthy. Look at Matthew chapter 15. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 15. Starting in verse 22. It says, And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Yeah. You see, the problem with uh, God's people today is that we think we ought, we think we deserve this, amen? We think we deserve something from the Lord. Mm -hmm. We think that uh, God owes us something. Well, God doesn't owe us anything, amen? amen? It is a blessing and a privilege to be a part of His house. Amen. It is a blessing and a privilege to be able to come here and hear the words of God spoken and to see God's Spirit move amen. in the service. Yeah. But people treat the church house as it's a, a, a burden. And that they they uh, really lift up the service when they're here. Hey, I bet you their services are a lot better when I'm there. And oh, how they miss me when I'm not. And they think it's all about them. And we're a selfish generation is what we are. We think it's all about us. And it has nothing to do with us. And all about Jesus Christ. Amen. This woman understood that. What he said to her was true. He didn't have to give her anything. Nothing was promised to the Gentiles. But yet, or nothing was owed to the Gentiles, I should say that. And yet she believed. Amen. Amen. And she was not offended when he said, it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dog. Did she get offended? No. And say, oh, how dare he talk to me like that? Well, who is he to tell me that? No, she humbled herself and said, truth, Lord. Truth, Lord. People hear the Word of God preached and it hits a nerve and then they get all offended. Oh, well, I just won't come back there again. When they need to humble themselves and say, Truth, Lord, woe is me. Yep. 
I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. And I, I'm a pe other people of unclean lips. That's what we really need to be saying. Amen. When God convicts us instead of saying, well, who is he? Because it's not my word. It's the word of God. Amen. Amen. And really what you're doing is saying, well, who is God to tell me anything? Mm -hmm. Can the thing formed say to he that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? Mm -hmm. But that's what we try to do. Yeah. Is we try to be the commander in chief, don't we? And tell God what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. Well, God, you need to fill this church house. But don't ask me to get out and go on visitation. Mm -hmm. Well, God, you need to fill this church out. But don't ask me to go uh, and talk to my co-workers. Well, God, you need to save them people over uh, 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 down there, you know, in, in Texas or wherever. But don't ask me to be a witness to them. Yeah. I just can't do it. You know, whatever the excuse is or whatever God uh, uh, talks to us about, and yet we're not willing to do it because we're just too good and our time is just too valuable. But yet this woman, she took it and said, Truth, Lord, you're right. I'm wrong. But yet, Lord, even the dogs get crumbs. Hey, man. Well, she got more than crumbs. Mm -hmm. Because of her humility and her faith. Amen. Look at Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18 and verses 9 through 14, it says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee, a teacher of the law. Yeah. A man that knew the Word of God. A man that was religious and probably was faithful in church. Or what they would call church, the temple. And he went up into the house to pray, into the temple, and, he, and the other a publican, a tax collector, a low-down piece of trash. And the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Lord, you couldn't do anything without me, Lord. You just I'm just such an asset. <laughs> and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. Wasn't even worthy to look up into heaven. But smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. You see, when we won't repent of our sin, when we're convicted and we harden our neck, we become prideful. That's exactly what happens as we let pride set in. We say, oh, I'm better than that. Or I don't need that. I'm a good person. You see, that's what happens is we let pride come in to our heart. And that's exactly what it is. The Bible says pride goeth before destruction. But it was the man who wouldn't even look up to heaven. Wasn't worthy in his own eyes. But yet, asked the Lord to be merciful to him, a sinner. Yeah. Amen. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5 and verses 5 through 8. <coughs> it says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. Yeah. 
casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom He may devour. You know, sometimes I think, maybe not Satan himself, but maybe all his demons that he has, maybe whispers in the ear of people. When they're convicted, when they hear something in the Word of God that they, they know that they need to change in their own life, to let God work on them. And a little whisper <coughs> says, you don't need that. Don't listen to that. You're not that bad. But oh yes, we are. Amen. Amen. We need the correction of a Father. We need the correction of our Heavenly Father. Amen. And in Mark chapter 6, when He went there to His own people, it says, and He marveled. You see, with the centurion, He marveled of His faith. <laughs> well, when He was with His own people, the people that should have been listening and heeding to His call, He marveled because of their unbelief. Because they were offended at Him. Are we offended at Jesus? Say, no, I love Jesus. What about His Word? Amen? Yeah. People say, oh, I love Jesus. But then when the Word is preached, they say, no, I don't have nothing to do with that. Don't speak to me about that. Yeah. Well, then how can you say you love Jesus? He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah. Amen. Amen? And yet... Those that should be keeping His commandments are offended by them. Look at Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 31, it says... And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Wow. And all bear with him witness and wondered at the gracious words which were which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proper physician, heal thyself. Amen. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. <laughs> And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Eliseus the prophet. And none of them was cleansed, saying, Naaman the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. And rose up and thrust him out of the city. And led him 
unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went his way, and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath day. <laughs> their reaction was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> their actions, when they heard this, these words, should have been repentance. Mm -hmm. They should have fell on their knees and wept and asked for forgiveness. But yet they wanted to thrust him down headlong out of their city. Yeah. And what did it say? But he went his way. Mm -hmm. You know, there's many churches where the people don't want to listen. You know what? If there's something preached against sin, they get offended. And you know what I think happens? Jesus just goes His way. And the people are none the wiser. And they think, oh, what a good time we're having in church. But Jesus ain't there. Because they've thrown Him out. And He went His way. Because they've stopped taking heed to the Word of God. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter 24. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, He that believeth on Him shall not be ashamed. Amen. That word ashamed means offended. But yet so many who say they're believed are offended by Him. Don't tell me homosexuality is, is a sin. That, that's offensive to me. Well, not if you really truly love the Lord. It's not. Amen. Amen. Because it is truth. It is what the Bible says. Amen. Don't tell me that I need to repent. Don't tell me that I, I need to uh, uh, be more faithful. Don't tell me that I need uh, to be a witness, that I need to preach the gospel, that I need to hand out gospel tracts. Don't tell me that I need to do these things. Well, you're offended at Jesus Christ. Because let me tell you something. He gave His life for us. He expects to give our life for Him. Amen. Matthew chapter 24, and verses 9 through 13 says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for not my name's sake. And then shall many be offended. Let me read that again. And then shall many be offended. And shall betray one another. And shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You say, you say, well, I, you know, I'll give my life for the Lord one day. I don't mind. Well, don't think you're going to give your life for the Lord one day if you're not giving your life for Him now. Amen. What thinks you, you're going to have the Constitution to lay down your life and, and, and give your head to be taken off for the name of Jesus? When you won't even do what He says now when the Word of God is preached. Amen. But yet you harden your heart and you stiffen your neck and you don't do what God has called you to do. What makes you think that one day you'll have the strength to do it then. Amen. You're kidding yourself. Mm -hmm. But many shall be offended. Not a few. Many. Many. Why? Because they've been offended all along. Yeah. They've just been... Playing church. Mm -hmm. Playing church. Yeah. It never really meant anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, it never really affected their lives. Nothing really ever changed. They just came to church so that they could seem religious and seem like everything was alright on the outside, but when on the inside they were full of extortion yeah. and sin and wickedness because they never really repented and gave their hearts to the Lord. Yeah. Because they never came under His authority and said, Lord, whatever You want, I'll do. Lord, here am I. Send me. 
Amen. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Many, many love, many people's love has waxed cold. They don't care anymore. It doesn't affect them at all. They've seared their hearts with a hot iron. And nothing affects them or moves them anymore. Look at Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15 and verses 7 through 14. It says, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude, and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Yeah. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou not that the Pharisees were offended after they heard these, this saying? Lord, why do you have to offend people? Yeah. Isn't that what people say today? Why can't we all get along? Why do you have to be so offensive? Well, you know what? It's not God. It's them. Amen. That's where the problem is. Yeah. It's not with God. It's with us. Yeah. Because we're the ones that won't humble ourselves. We're the ones that won't come under the mighty hand of God. And yet we say it's God who should not be offending us. Or it's God's people who should not be offending us. But yet the problem is their hearts. Verse 13, But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Yeah. Amen. And the sad thing about it, let's look back to Matthew chapter 8. <coughs> Matthew chapter 8, let's start in verse 10. It says, When Jesus heard it, He marveled and said to them that followed in other words, he wanted them to take notice. He didn't say it to the man himself. He turned to those who followed him. Said, listen, I want you to take heed of this man right here. Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Now that might have offended those who followed him. I thought I was better than that. You know, here I am following Jesus. Going where he's going. Yeah. And yet this Roman soldier comes up and he's going to praise him instead of praising me. And that's all people want is a pat on the back, right? Yeah. A pat on the back. That's all people are after. Well, did anybody pat Jesus on the back when he took that cross <coughs> up to Mount Calvary? No, they spit on him. And they cursed him. And exactly what he said they would say, they said, no. Physician, heal thyself. If you're so great, why don't you just come down off of that cross? And they mocked him. Why do we think that we deserve someone to praise us? Do you think God should just come down here and sit here and just start praising us? Saying, oh, what a good job you're doing. Well, I, I just don't know if I can do anything without it all. You say, why does your words have to be so harsh tonight? Because we need to hear this, amen? Right. Because we're not above falling, amen? Right. We're not above what this message is teaching us tonight. Because we all need to understand that we're nobody without Jesus Christ. Right. Right. That's right. Amen. And Jesus said, without me, ye can do nothing. Amen. Amen. And if you get anything tonight, you need Jesus. Amen. And this church needs Jesus. And we need the Word. Amen. Amen. We don't need man's traditions or man's ways. We need God's ways. Amen. 
And he said, And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Now they're thinking, Oh, he's talking about me. Woo! Now he's going to praise me. Now he's going to praise me. But verse 12, But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. <laughs> Ouch. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah. You see, those who thought that they deserved it all, that, that the Messiah was going to come and set up His earthly kingdom and let them rule because they were just so great people. They were the ones that found out, you know, God's looking for those of a broken heart yeah. and a contrite spirit. Yeah. He's not looking for the sacrifices of the righteous. No, He's looking for the humble person who will submit themselves to His authority. Yeah. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 23. It says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. What is a tree supposed to do? Bring fruit. Bring forth fruit. And you know what? When a tree doesn't bring forth fruit, it's good for nothing. Yeah. You know, it is our duty to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. That is our duty. Yeah. It's not something that is above our service. No, he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body. That means everything. Yes. I want you to give everything, your all, on the altar of sacrifice laid. Amen? Which is your reasonable service. Yeah. He's not asking to go above and beyond. For us to humble ourselves and just to do what He says to do and be faithful and not expect anything for it. Because that is our duty to do. Verse 20 it says, Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Yeah. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Yeah. Because you see, they were doing it all for praise. And weren't doing it for their love of their Savior. Yeah. Look at Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 and verses 1 through 3. And My dad preached on this a while back. So I'm kind of taken from what he preached. But yet it is so true. Amen. Yeah. Verses 1 through 3 it says, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. That's the truth. Yeah, it is. Earnest heed. Earnest heed. Sincere. Amen. We need to take heed to have ears to hear, lest at any time we should let them slip. See, that's why common knowledge wasn't so common anymore. Because they let those things slip. Yeah. That's why Josiah had to get the uh, priest in there and reading the law because they had forgotten what the law had commanded. Yeah. Amen. Because they let them slip. You know what? Churches don't even know what they're doing anymore. Yeah. 
They're not there. They don't, we don't even know what we're here for anymore. Uh, well, well, we're here for fellowships and, and, and giving kids something to do. Games to play. And, and we're here for bake sales and garage sales and, and, and we're just here to make the community look better. And churches have forgotten what we're truly here to do and that is to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth and to be a lighthouse. Amen. Amen. And to send out the light. Amen. Amen. Out into the highways and hedges and the byways. That's what we're here for. Yeah. But they've forgotten. Why? Because they let it slip. Yeah. Verse 2, For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape? Are we above the wrath of God? The Bible says that God is not... Uh, it's not His purpose, right, for us to be in His wrath. But yet, you know what? We take that and we say, well, I can do whatever I want to then. And yet, God's not the one that left you. If there's something wrong in your life, it's because you left Him. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So don't say that it's God's Word that did you wrong. No, it's because you did not take heed to it. Amen. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard Him. Yeah. And then look to Hebrews chapter 10 and we'll be through. If you will, stand with me as we read. Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 22 through 31. It says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. And again, you're not going to be able to have full assurance of faith if you're not humble. Yeah. Not going to happen. Humility and faith go hand in hand. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promise. Amen. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some end, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day of prayer. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for a judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversary. Yeah. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant Wherewith he was sanctified and unholy thing. He's not talking to lost people here. He's talking to the church. Amen. That's right. Yep. And have done despite unto the Spirit of grace. Mm -hmm. In other words, you took the grace of God in vain. Yeah. Because you didn't continue in his word. Yeah. But said, now I'm saved, I can live like I want to. Yeah. <laughs> For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will re recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You know what? Amen. He that being often reproved hardens his neck <coughs> is going to come to sudden destruction. Yep. Amen. Because it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. And I don't think he's very happy with what he sees in the church house Amen. today. Yeah. Because he doesn't just see the outward appearance of people. Yeah. And oh, they like to lift up their hands. And they like to dance. And have a good time. 
God's not looking at that. He's looking at this right here. Man. The whole time they like to dance and wave their hands around, He's looking at their heart and saying, you know what? They haven't repented. And they haven't humbled themselves to me. They're just wanting to make themselves feel good. I can't see that because I can't see the heart. But I know the fruit. Amen? I can see the fruit. Yeah. Or, in other words, I can see the lack thereof. Yeah. And we all can. We know. And more importantly, we know our own hearts. Yeah. We know our own hearts. And we need to be as that centurion. Lord, I'm not worthy. Yeah. But speak the word only. Amen. Amen. Lord, I want your word. And that woman, you know what? Lord, you're right. I don't deserve it. But Lord, I believe in you. Yeah. And I know what your word has said. Yeah. And even the dogs get crumbs from the master's table. Yeah. I know, Lord, you are the master. You are the master. You are the head of the body, which is the church. Yeah. And I'm going to follow you. Amen. Amen. We're going to have an invitation tonight. Yeah. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you tonight for your word. We just pray that you would use it in the hearts of all those that hear it. Lord, that we truly would have ears to hear. Lord, that it would sink deep. Lord, even though it might cut. Lord, that we would humble and submit ourselves under your mighty hand. Lord, that we might truly be healed. Lord, that you might heal our country. But Lord, our country is not going to be healed till our churches are healed. Lord, our churches aren't going to be healed till the people will humble themselves and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways. Mm -hmm. Only then, Lord, can you heal in our lives. Lord, we just pray that you would do so in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen.